Hey everybody, in this video we're going to go through an install of Porteous Kiosk 5.5 which was just released earlier today. Let's get started. All right, so we want to go and and we can go to their download page and we want to not that one. Where's the 5.5? There we go. Had it cached in my browser. We are going to right click and copy the link for the ISO. Come back to Proxmox. ISO images, download from URL, and we'll get this downloaded, which should not take long. Okay, and we're done. So we'll come up here to top and create a new VM. The OS is going to be Porteous Kiosk System. Uh, we can't do the QEMU agent because once it's installed, it doesn't give us any access to the actual system. We're going to do 45 gigs SSD emulation, four cores, and we'll give it four gigs of RAM. Next, start after created, finish. And we're going to be at number 114. So it's booting from the ISO. And what Porteous does is it boots right into a configuration wizard. So we're going to use the Ethernet connection for this particular installation. Uh, we're going to use DHCP. We're just going to say next. We're going to use Firefox. Set time. And it is eight. So we are on the 27th of March, not the 28th. And it is eight, which would be 20, 29, apply. Next, and it's launching the network wizard. And hopefully this will take off. Connection established successfully. So it's going to go on to the next segment here. So you've got a few choices. Launch the kiosk wizard to create a new configuration. Point kiosk to remote management configuration. Load kiosk configuration from network location or load from removable device. We're going to create a new configuration. Okay. Remote kiosk management. We are going to disable that. Porteous kiosk server. We're not going to use that. So we can go ahead and close that panel. Firewall enabled. ICMP, which would be for ping. For this particular instance, I'm going to enable that. Wake on LAN, disable. Hostname alias, disable. Kiosk hostname, disabled as fine browser settings and then enter a custom home page for the browser we're going to do that and i know that's a valid url url filter we're not going to worry about that right now when i set this up in the library i do put in some filters private mode disable private mode to let the browser remember Form search history. We're going to say disable. Password manager disabled. I typically use this as a catalog machine where they can search the database that has all our books in it. Equivalent to, you know, the old card catalog for people who are my vintage or older, shall we say. Uh, search engine. We'll leave it at Google for the sake of this video. Manage bookmarks disabled, SSL certs. We're going to leave that disabled at the moment. Pop up windows. We will actually enable that. Enable this option to allow pop up windows, which are opened as new tabs in Firefox uh, and directly on screen in Chrome. 
Uh, sure. Okay. Disable zoom controls. Disable this option to remove zoom controls. We don't want to do that. Browser zoom level. We're going to set that to, I'm going to set it to 1.2 because I normally have to work with people that have some vision impairments. And since I need to make it usable for everyone, going 20% larger is okay. Uh, we're not going to modify browser user agent. File browsing, no. Address bar is enabled. Auto hide nav bar. It's fine. Navigation bar is enabled. Refresh web page and virtual keyboard. Okay, come back up here and we'll close this pane of options. System settings, background wallpaper, that's fine. Session idle. Restart or lock session after a specified period of inactivity. Enable. Five minutes is fine. And we'll say okay to that. Persistence level none. Swap file, we're going to disable that. ZRAM compression, we will enable that. We'll go 15%. Removable drives is disabled, time zone. And we'll get this set up correctly. Detroit and everything else, I think we're okay on. Mouse cursor, we're actually going to go the large version. This is the way I typically set it up for library use and that's usually what I use Porteous Kiosk for is for a public machine at the library that can't go to just a couple of specified websites. So for that it's very useful. Session password, run command, shutdown menu, in our case, for this video, we're going to say enable. We take off lock session and we're going to get rid of sleep and just do shut down or reboot. Okay, that's all good. UAFI, we don't need for this. SSH, we're all right. Printing is disabled. Hardware video decode is disabled. Watchdog timer. I think we are pretty much set. And we'll say next. And there's our config. And we'll say next. And we're gonna say next again. And you've actually gotta click on the desk, which is kinda of dumb with only one desk. Proceed. And so this goes through anything that is not part of the ISO, it's going to download from the website. So I need to remove the ISO from the virtual optical drive. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna do number one. And in just a moment or two, this should boot up and give us an idea of the settings that we have selected. And so here we go. It does in fact load up my YouTube page. Okay, so that uh, reload parameter is a little much. I wonder if it's going to do the same thing on this. Okay, so my selections were not foolproof, but that gives you a little bit of an idea of what options you do have with Porteous Kiosk 5.5. And, you know, this can be useful if you want a public machine that is locked down, and certainly you can lock it down further than what I did in this demonstration. There are definitely times where you want a kiosk type install. This allows you to pick between Firefox and Chrome. You don't have to waste a Windows license doing a setup like this, especially if it's something that is going to be set up temporarily. Let me know down in the comments if you have a use case for Porteous Kiosk. And if you would like to see some particular options set, if I do another install. All right, on that note, thank you all for watching. Do what you do down below the video. Pass this along to friends and colleagues if you know somebody that would find it useful. And I will see you 
in the next video. Have a great day.